Hello everybody, this is Sodafan2k10 here, and for the first time in 9 years, we're going to be doing an unboxing video. Um, but we're not just going to be taking a look at Dart and Victor Comes to Sodor in this one unboxing video. Oh no. If I pull back the camera, you can see all this amazing stuff that we're going to be taking a look at in this one video. Uh, so if you don't follow me on Twitter, then let me explain where all this came from. Uh, I recently got the absolute incredible honour of visiting the US to meet up with over 30 members of the Thomas and Friends community. And whilst I was there, I was staying with my good friend Enterprise Engine 93, and he took me around to some stores that were in his local town, and he helped me to pick out a lot of really cool stuff that was being sold at these stores. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much where most of this came from, but the rest of it. Uh, some of these were gifts, some of the stuff I bought from other members of the uh, community who were also at this meetup. So yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to look at, and I think I know exactly where we're going to start. So, let's get to it. Let's start off with the most controversial item that I picked up, which is this. Thomas and Friends Wood Near. Now, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on video before. I may have done in my live stream that I did a while back. But um, I have vowed to never purchase a Thomas and Friends wood engine because they are, in my opinion, you know, and I think in everybody's opinion, completely and utterly inferior in every way to the previous um, Thomas and uh, Thomas and Friends wooden railway line. Uh, I say that, but I mean some engines do have some redeeming qualities. I mean, I got to see a Thomas and Friends wood Thomas. Um, in person, and to, to be honest, it doesn't look too bad. There are some redeeming fa uh, factors to them, but for the most part, you know, they're all inferior in every way. But when I first saw Nia, when I first saw pictures of Nia online, she blew me away. They really, it really did. She actually looks, you know, pretty much how she would have done most likely in the previous wooden railway line. Uh, minus, of course, the fact that she's missing a dome, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But she actually looks pretty good for a Thomas of Friends wood engine. Let me um, show the back really quick. Um, what I do like is that the Thomas of Friends wood engines do have a description of the engine, but they're really abstract and weird. Uh, for example, this one says, Meet the Caring Optimist. Whether she's in her homeland of Africa or travelling around the world, Nia is positive and thoughtful. Her eagerness to help and sometimes irritate her friends, but her truthfulness and kind heart always win them over. I'm not entirely sure if that's the best or most accurate description of her, but I've just realised we spent about you know two minutes just looking at her. How about we actually do what this video is all about and unbox her? This is the first... Um, Tons of Friends wood item that I've ever purchased and it's not going to be the last. I have one engine that I do want to purchase. Oh, here we go. That's actually quite easy. Um, I do plan on buying a Tons and Friends wood Rebecca but only for the purpose of making a custom of her. So here she is, Nia, out of the package. Let's go ahead and take a little look at her. Let's see if the camera will focus at all on her face. My camera is very outdated. I should get a new one. Um, but there's her face, if you can just about, about see it. It's actually not too bad of a face. Um, she's got buffer detailing, which is kind of cool for um, Tom's Friends Wood Engines. The fact they have buffer detailing now. There's a look at her side. Not too bad, to be honest. I like the detail they've included on her. The only issue that I have really with Tom's Friends Wood is that they're all very blocky, very square, they don't, they haven't rounded off any of the edges or anything, and I don't mean, you know, like, rounding off the corners of the body or anything, I mean, if her, you know, there's no, how should I put it, like, rounding off or anything, like, you look at um, Thomas's wheel arches, for example, the detail for the, the roundness of them is there, but they're not actually round, it's just a block. Um, I hope I got that across okay, but there she is, there's Nia. Uh, she's actually not too bad. As a character, I don't mind Nia. Uh, let me get a bit of track here, because I've got the camera lifted up slightly. Um, as a character, I don't quite mind Nia. I think she's okay as a character. It's just that we haven't seen much of her. 
Um, we got, you know, obviously we saw a lot of her in the movie, Big World, Big Adventures. But since then, we haven't really seen too much of her. She just had small roles. Um, and just been kind of, you know, one or two lines or something. But, there we go. That, that's my opinion. A lot of people seem to hate her. I don't. I think she's actually a decent character. But we just need to see more of her in the actual series. Now, I mentioned earlier that she doesn't have a dome. I do want to try and add a dome to her. I'm thinking maybe I can just take some clay or something and just, like, format a dome or something on top of her. They've got the detail there of it. It's painted on, but they have a moulded one, and they haven't done it for any of the wood engines, which is just odd to me. I do not understand why they had to take away the dome. It's such a minor detail. Why do they need to take it away? Um, but there we go. I, d I don't think I mentioned she has got some cold detail, which is a little bit odd. Um, but yes, I think the only thing missing from this engine that I would like to see is she has like this cylinder here normally. I don't know if it's like a water tank or if it's her sanding gear or something. But it's missing on this and I'm not surprised it's missing. But maybe I'll try and find some way to add that detail back in. Um, when it comes to Nia, I'm very curious to know one thing. If she was made in the original Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway line, would she have been made in this six-wheel format? Or would she have suffered the same detail as uh, Ryan or Ashima, where they're bigger than Thomas, but their wooden railway models depict them as the same size? Um, and I ask this question because the, um, the Thomas and Friends Wood series have shortened all the engines, even bogeyed engines like Gordon or Spencer or whatever, they're all on six-wheel chassis. So I'm curious to know if, you know, would Mattel have made Nia a longer engine or would they have always gone with this six-wheel format? It's always something I've wondered, but there we go. Um, in terms of whether she'll appear in my series, I, I do have plans. I do want to have her in my series. I don't have any episodes written for her yet, and I don't know if, um, you know, she'll appear yet in my series because in the current canon of my series, I'm only up to um, uh, Sodor's Legend of Lost Treasure. I do have plans to get through um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Great Race. I do have plans for Great Race engines, but yes, at some point we'll get to Big World Big Adventures, and I will include Nia in my series. So there she is, the only Thomas and Friends wood engine that you'll ever see in my series. And there we go. How about we move on to the next one? Speaking of the great race, let's take a look at the star of that movie. Besides Thomas, of course. It's Ashima. Uh, so, for those of you who are not aware, none of the great race characters ever came to me in the UK. In fact, nothing from 2016 came to me uh, to the UK. Uh, which is a real shame because, you know, I love the movie, so I wanted to pick up the characters, but they never came. So I'm really happy to finally have Ashima. Uh, let's take a look at the packaging just really quickly. Typical for the time, we have the um, the Great Race uh, logo and banner or whatever on the packaging, uh, which is really nice. I, I love it when they do that. Um, but then there's Ashima herself. We'll take a look at her in more detail when we get out of the box. There's the back of the box. Um, I like the picture there, but as you notice, unlike Thomas and Friends Wood, there's no description of her, so we don't get to learn about who Ashima is, where she comes from, and, you know, why she's a character. Why is she here for the Great Race? We don't get to learn that, which is a bit of a shame. But, anyway, um, you know, I can tell you all that, or you can look at it yourself. Uh, so, how about we get her out of the packaging? So, Ashima is an Indian engine, and she came over to participate in the Great Railway Show. Oh, here we go. Easy again. Sweet. And there she is. Let's go and bring in my track once again, really quick. Uh, she came over from India to take part in the shunting competition in the Great Railway Show. Let's go ahead and zoom in really quick. There we go. A little bit better. And there she is. So, let's take a quick look at her. There is her face. It's okay. I mean, look at myself. She's got a little bit of a smile, but it's not too prominent. Uh, there's her side. I will say, as glad as I have to have her, looking at her in person, she's not as striking as her, um, as she appears in the Great Race. 
she doesn't seem to have the flair, the the, the pop of colour or whatever that she has in the um, in the Great Race, which is a bit of a shame. It's a little surprising they don't have all that detail. And in fact, I was just talking about how um, you know certain engines had been shortened or whatever in the uh, in the wood range. Well, technically they were doing something similar here because Ashima is supposed to be huge. She's supposed to be so much bigger than Thomas. But here she's depicted as the same size, which is a bit of a shame. I would have loved to see, you know, an eight-wheel version of her. And I think, in fact, people have made customs of her where she has, you know, eight wheels. And they look fantastic. Uh, but nonetheless, here she is. She's a nice-looking engine. She has um, some nice detail around her cab. Uh, the lining is all really nice. Um, I think this is meant to like be her pistons, just decorated. Um, I have seen her Thomas and Friends wood version, and I will admit that version I think looks better in terms of detail. But you know, the reason I went for this one is well, a I saw it first. And I don't think I saw the um, the wood version in any of the stores I visited, but. I would much prefer to have, I would much prefer to purchase the um, the wooden railway stuff versus the wood stuff. I don't want to um, support Thomas and Friends wood too much. So that's why I kind of wanted to go for this version. Also, I was talking earlier about how Thomas and Friends wood engines are all blocky and straight, not really curved. Well, she doesn't, you can see in this version, she has like this cutout along here, along her running board. She doesn't have that in her wood version, which is a little odd. But there we go. So she's not quite as detailed as her wood version, so some people might prefer that, but I just prefer to um, to pick up this version. So there she is, there's Ashima. I do have plans for Ashima, I will say that. I do have a story concept in mind, and I do need Ashima for it, but I technically also do need to get Vinny, Gina, and Frida as well from um, you know, the only other characters that were made in the Wooden Railway line. Uh, unless I go ahead and build my own customs of the others, but I don't have plans for that. But there she is, Ashima. So let's go ahead and move her off to the side, and let's take a look at the next item. Let's switch tracks briefly for just a moment, and take a look at some rolling stock. This is the Dino Fossil Discovery 2-pack, based on the DVD uh, Dinos and Discoveries. Uh, I really love the look of these rolling stock. I love the look of uh, just rolling stock in general from the Wooden Railway range. And this is really cool. This is the Sodor Dinosaur Exhibit cars. And I think they look pretty cool. So we've got this red truck, which has a little feature we'll show in a minute. And we have this other cargo car type of thing with some cargo of some fossils. So that's really exciting. Um, so let's take a look at the back really quick there's no description again but you can see light up dino eggs and flip over to reveal fossils so really exciting i love the look of these trucks because i want to use these for um Ulsted castle type of thing so let's go ahead and get these out these look really interesting to me and i was really excited to see them um in terms of like rolling stock is there like a tab or anything on this here we go. In terms of uh, rolling stock, I'm, there's a lot of cool rolling stock that I want to try to pick up, but for the time being, I'm focusing on getting characters for my series. Oh, wow, how is this happening? There we go. Brute force. Ah, there we go. Oh, cool, the cargo is actually separate. And we've got this, which I'm going to get instructions for changing batteries. And here we go. I should actually... What year is this from, out of curiosity? This is from... Oh, 2014, which does make sense. There we go. There there are the Sodo Dinosaur... What's it called in the packaging? Dino Fossil Discovery cars. These are really cool. I like the look of these a lot. Let's go ahead and move this one off, and I've just activated that by accident. So, this is the Dino Egg Discovery car. Uh, I love the look of it. It's all plastic because it's um, it's battery powered, so it has to be plastic. But I love the look of it. I will say that when they do plastic, they do it well uh, because they actually go through the trouble of adding extra details to it. So I can feel on this, the frames and everything are actually 
part of the mold and you can feel the rivets um, on the frames and also the planks are actually like separate they're not like painted or anything which would be the case on wooden um, if it was made out of wood so people might not like plastic in one railway but when they do it they actually take advantage of it and this actually looks really nice if we take a look on top we can see some dino eggs i don't know why this is big open area why couldn't they have thrown another one there uh, but the big gimmick here is if you press the eggs they light up oh and you actually see dinosaurs in them I don't know if you can see that on camera at all. Yeah, you really can't, unfortunately, but you can actually see dinosaurs there. Um, so that is, what's it called? The Dino Egg Discovery Car. Let's go ahead and bring in the other one. This is the Dino Fossil Discovery Car. So this type of cargo car is um, different than normal. It's all wood, usually cargo cars are plastic, but this one is made of wood, and this is typical of certain kinds of cargo cars. I'm, I don't really know any off the top of my head, but I know that this design has been used before. Uh, but we got Soto Dinosaur Exhibit, flip it around, same thing on the other side. So it's just a cargo car, nothing really much to talk about, but this cargo is really cool. It's a plastic little container, but it has like sand in it and it has some fossils inside of it so you have some dinosaur bones and uh, skeletal remains of dinosaurs inside so I can see I apologize for the glare I think that is like the head of a dinosaur a rib cage of some sort and then a, a claw like a hand of, um, of a dinosaur over on the left there kind of cool um, oh there's more Wow, on the other side, there's more um, to be seen. That's really cool. I love this. This is fantastic. Oh, I can see how it works now. You basically have to like shake it to get the sand to fall through. I don't know if I can show it any easier, but there's like this grating or whatever inside of it that the sand falls through. So as you turn over, you shake it, the sand falls to the bottom and reveals the um the fossils and the skeletons uh, beneath so that's really nice so i'm a big fan of these i think these are fantastic these will go well for a train that's going up to Elsted castle or coming from Elsted castle if the um if the earl wants to have some of his um dinosaur display uh taken somewhere but you can use these for um uh, whatever the episode is called where Samson brings dinosaurs or whatever up to um, Ulster Castle. Obviously these aren't dinosaurs themselves, but you can still have a train of these coming up for uh, coming up to Ulster Castle for the uh, deals dinosaur display, which I think is really cool. So I like these a lot. I think these are fantastic. I love the color scheme of them. I love the fact that you have the eggs which light up and reveal um, some dinosaurs inside. And I love this cargo and I'm glad that it's actually removable as well. So it's really nice. Very nice pack, very impressed. And how about then we move on to the next item. Let's stick with the theme of uh, the Earl of Sodo and Ulster Castle for just a little bit longer while we take a look at this item. This is Toby's Castle Delivery based on King of the Railway. Uh, this is one of two, um, two packs that was released for uh, King of the Rail... Actually, no, more uh, than two um two packs released for the movie but what i'm getting at is there was another pack which had thomas and a it was like a purple circus train car and it had some knights in it they did have that at the store but i wasn't too interested in getting it i probably should have considering that i'm never going to be able to find it again unless i get back to the us but this is the one that i really wanted because i really wanted this um this truck because i uh, I love the design of it, and I love the cargo that comes with it. So, we've got Toby, and we've got the, um, well, let's just take a sneak peek, the Royal Crest cargo car. So, from King of the Railway, flip it around, there's a look at the back, so you've just got the picture there as a standard. This is from 2013, which makes sense, because that's when King of the Railway was released. And King of the Railway is actually a, a pretty good special. It's... 
it's the first special of that era you know from the transition from the nitrogen um you know animation era it was the first production animated by arc productions and honestly a lot of people think it's a bit of a mess of a um of a movie because it's kind of multiple uh what is it multiple um what trying to say multiple plot lines all put into one you've got the plot line of uh gordon and spencer racing then stephen looking for his new job and thomas percy and james helping out at the castle to rebuild it you know there's a lot of plot lines but i overall i love the special and i'm happy to get some merchandise from it so here we have toby toby's castle delivery let's take this car away for just a quick second this is the first time I've ever gotten a Thomas Wooden Railway Toby because the one that I use in my series is the Brio Toby. So I get to see kind of the, the details that go into him from the Wooden Railway range. So there's a look at his face, very uh, CGI face. In fact, he's actually in uh, Reach of Me. So we'll do a little comparison of the Brio Toby versus this one. So, uh, again, it's his face. He's got a lamp uh, turned to the side. You've got the typical uh, Toby detail. And what's nice about this, it is actually Royal Crest Toby. So he's got the banner um, draped across his, uh, his frame, his uh, bodywork. And I'm glad that they put it here because typically when, like, Thomas is decorated in a banner, they put it over his cab, his cab door. So it's like, how do we just drive and find and get out? <laughs> or in, even, if they drape it on before they get there. Uh, let's look at the back. He's actually quite nicely detailed on the back. Well, I say that, but it's pretty much exactly the same as the front, just minus the face. I mean, that is what Toby is. And then the other side is exactly the same. So he's a very simple model. I can tell his main body and his roof is wood, but obviously his um, cow catchers and side plates are plastic. There's a look at the top. I do like the addition of his funnel. I think that's a nice little addition that they made to this. It would be nice if they maybe painted on like his bell detail, but the fact that we've got a molded funnel is very nice. So there's not really a whole lot more to say about this Toby, but I have here my Brio Toby. So we'll go ahead and do a quick comparison of these. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at their faces really quick. So, detail-wise, I can see straight away the Brio one is wider. The, the main wooden bodywork is wider. In fact, if I show that really quick, you can see that his bodywork goes right out to the edge of his cow catchers. But the, um, the wooden railway Toby, there's a little bit of a gap. Not too much, but it's enough to be noticeable. Now you can see that the the window detailing is slightly different. The lamp on the Brio Toby is slightly smaller as well. Um, and don't be fooled by the fact that the cow catchers and side plates of the Brio Toby are a different color. That's just because this Brio Toby is so much older. So you know the, the plastic is just you know discolored over time. There's a look at the side their side uh, details. So the Brio Toby has these uh, vents going on between, um, you know, along his side plates, uh, but he is missing the uh, handrails that um, for his cab. Uh, I can see his, his seven is slightly bigger, and also he's missing the, the Royal Crest banner, but that's just because this is a special Toby, so the normal Toby wouldn't have that either. There's a look at the back, pretty similar, and the other side, which is obviously the same as the other. And look at the top, the Brio Toby is just plain, but the wooden railway Toby, obviously, as I mentioned, has the funnel and also two nail heads for keeping the roof in place, I'm guessing. So there we go, there's a nice little um, side detail, a nice little comparison between Brio and wooden railway. I always love doing that. Let's move Toby off and br bring back the um, cargo car the Royal Crest. Yeah, it is cargo car. This is a really nice looking truck. Uh, I love the color of it. I love they got the crest 
going on on the side. Uh, but that's all about it is for the detail. There's no nothing on the front, nothing on the back. And this cargo is quite nice. It's swords and shields, which is kind of nice. I, I like these plastic containers that they've got for these. It's the same looking container as from the Dino Fossil Discovery trucks we just looked at. Except this one is slightly shallower and doesn't have, obviously, the sand or the little grating in between. But it's a nice piece of cargo. Um, I'm really, really happy to see that this actually removes. I'm almost positive that there are some versions out there that this doesn't remove. This is actually, like, secured down in there. So I'm happy that this can actually remove because then, you know, it just adds to the play value. You can have this rolling down the hill and then tip over and then this all comes flying out. But... There we go, that's just me. So, oh, that's the wrong Toby. There we go. Actually, just out of curiosity, just because I have him here. There we go, there's Brio Toby with the Royal Crest cargo car. But that's not the Toby that came with it. This is the Toby that came with the cargo car. So, there we go. That is Toby's castle delivery. And Toby is now going to deliver this to the castle. And we're going to take a look at another item. Oh, actually, really quickly... It did also come, because this was 2013, it did come with a pamphlet. So let's just take a very quick look at this. Let's zoom out again. This is going to be really tricky to actually do. But this is the 2013 collector checklist. I'm so sad that they don't do these anymore. Like, this is so cool to get with your items. And this just shows, like, what the range was going to be in 2013. And there's so many cool items on here. And I have, well, I was going to say almost all of them, but I don't really. But, um, you know, the ones in here that I really want to get, I really want Patrick. I really want Winston. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Just from the back. Oh, that's right. They only have, like, a picture of, um, you know, some Destiny, little poster type of thing going on. They used to have destinations and sets and track packs or whatever on the back. But there we go, there's just a quick look at that. So let's move on to our next item. Let's move back to the engines with Dart from Day of the Diesels. Now I picked up Den a few years ago and I'll show him a little bit later, but I've never seen Dart before. And honestly, there's one thing about him which I really dislike and we'll get to that in a little bit, but here he is, finally part of my collection. He is part of the Day of the Diesels range along with Flynn, Belle, uh, Norman, Pax and Sydney, all those other characters. Take a look at the back. This is kind of um, going back in time a little bit because this is from 2011 when Day of the Diesels was released. So this is actually made by a learning curve still, I believe. Yes, down there, learning curve. So all the other writers we looked at so far were made by Mattel. So we're going back a little bit. So here is Dart. Let's go ahead and get him out of his packaging. And as I said, I picked up Dead. Wow, this is actually <laughs> a little bit stronger packaging than um, than uh, the Mattel ones. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I do like to try and keep boxes when I can, but this is. I'm just mutilating this at this point. Come along, Dart. Is that like? Oh, hang on a minute. I can do this. No, I can't. I still can't do it like this. There's a little. The plastic is like folded up over the cardboard a little bit, so that's why that tall. Come on, this is shouldn't be that hard. Just come out. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, I forgot. There, this little extra plastic bit on top. There we go. There's Dart. Cool. All right. How does this go back? And I want to keep this bit. Because you never know, if I uh, ever want to take darts somewhere else, I might want to keep that. I've kept all the boxes off to the side, so we'll look at those later. But here is dart, at long last. Uh, where is my track? Let's go zoom in on dart a little bit, get a bit of a closer look at him. Here's my track, there we go, lift him up a little bit. So there he is, dart is finally out. And I'll say this really quick, I, I am not a huge fan of this model of dart i think it's too long i really think they should have gone with the shorter wheelbase like um uh like the short flatbed that comes with um with lorry one 
or like the tender wheelbases. I really think they should have done that for Dart, but you know, I'll show a better example of why I think that a little bit later. But here he is for the time being. There's his face. Uh, I'm going to take a look at it myself. Yeah, it looks okay. I don't know why, it just looks a bit old to me, like with the wrinkles on his forehead. It just looks a bit old. But I do like the um, the hazard stripes on his buffer beam. There's a side detail view. So he's got all the typical detail and the vents and everything. He's got the Diesel Works logo. He's got his cab door. Surprisingly, he's got a little bit of detail on his back too. So he's got the hazard stripes there as well. And then the other side is obviously completely the same. There's the top. He's got these little silver dots. I'm not sure if they are. I think they might be exhausts or something. And then he's got this little plastic thing, which is... I don't want to call it a dome because he's a diesel and diesels don't have domes, but I'm not sure what that is. And I'm also not sure what this is supposed to represent either, this black part. But for the most part, yeah, he looks pretty good. But as I said, I think he personally should have been shortened down. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let's get another bit of track in. Here is Den next door to him. And I don't know why Dart just looks so much bigger compared to Den. But Dart is supposed to be tiny. He's supposed to be really small. And Den is supposed to be this huge hydraulic diesel. But Dart kind of dwarfs Den in some cases. Let's just see if I can... You can kind of get a sense of that. Not sure if you can really understand. It just looks like Dart is tall. I think he is actually. I mean, myself. He is actually taller. Unless it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. But Dart just looks so much taller than Den. And um, you know, I don't know if you can really get a sense of that on the camera, but yeah, that's just how um, it looks to me. So I will say this now, I do have plans to make my own custom dart. I don't know if I'm going to do this. My idea is to take the 2014 dart, the one, uh, the 2014 take and play dart, the one which has like the wooden railway style magnets and try to maybe disassemble that and fit it onto a shorter wheelbase. That's my plan. I've seen a lot of people do like take and play wooden railway hybrids in the past. I've seen people do Luke and Stafford and Samson and they actually look really cool. So I'm tempted to try and to try my own version but with Dart because I think that might be cool. He might look better scale compared to Den. So there we go. At least I now have Den. So if and when I ever introduce the Diesel Works to my series, I have both bosses ready to go, ready to fix up any diesels that need repairing. So there's Dart. One more quick spin around, I suppose. Uh, again, nice detail. I just think it's a bit too big for what he should be for how he's shown in the CGI series. So let's move him along and move to our next character. Our next one is a character I've recently picked up, but this is a slightly different version of him. It's Victor Comes to Sodor. So this is Victor's livery from his backstory from uh, Blue Mountain Mystery. And I think it's really cool that they gave Victor some proper backstory. He's the, he's the only character from that era, from like season 13 to 16, and from uh, Hero of the Rails and um, to Blue Mountain Mystery that has like a proper backstory to him. So I think it's really cool. And they also made, the fact they also made this version, they also made um, a model called Sea Soaked Victor, which has like seaweed and like water rust marks or whatever all over him to depict from when he was uh, fell off the ship into the water. So I think that's really cool. Um, all the items I showed so far, let me just show the back really quick. Nothing to, sh to see here, but what is it, 2012? So, right when Blue Mountain Mystery was released. So this is only a year later than uh, than Dart that we just looked at. So, let's go ahead and get him out. Um, it's actually really quick. I'm surprised they haven't got any Blue Mountain Mystery uh, logos or anything on this packaging. Maybe this is a later version? Not sure. I mean, it's from 2012, but then again, that might be saying something. Let's see if I can do this method again. There we go. That's what I was trying to do before. And for that, and then because this actually gives you lovely access to the inside. I also realized there's no pamphlet or anything 
Or, I, I know there's no character card, there wouldn't have been at this time, but there's no uh, pamphlet. Maybe the maybe learner could have stopped that as well. Okay, let's get it out of the way. There's Victor. Uh, oh, here it is. This is what I was looking for. So there he is. Victor comes to Sodor. So, let's take a little look at him. So, it's basically, you know, it's just Victor, but he's got this striking yellow and green livery, which is really nice. Um, we will do a little comparison between this and the normal version of Victor, but uh, here we go. Little um, look at the details. So he's got these little stars, these like six point stars on his side there. He's got the green stripes on his boiler. He's got his regular domes, his lamp, uh, piston detail, all the little pipework detail. And that is a number 1173. Maybe that represents, this logo represents his previous railway back in Cuba. There's a look at the back. Wow, I didn't realize he was going to have that sort of detail. That's really cool. So he's got a window, he's got his buffer beam, I think. That's what that red stripe is. Buffers and potentially his coupling. That's really cool. And the other side, of course, is the same. And he's also got buffer detailing. It's weird. Certain engines have the buffer detailing, but others don't. I think Porter and Scruff have this. And just for whatever reason, some engines were appointed that detail. Others weren't, and I don't understand why. Uh, but what I was going to say earlier was um, the other items we looked at, they all came from stores around New Jersey that um, uh, Matt um, Enterprising took me to. This actually came from... Drad's Derailment, uh, which is a fantastic hobby store, and the owner of it is a really cool guy, and I got to talk to him a little bit. Um, I think somebody must have told him that, you know, I came from all the way from Wales, and he was expressing how he wanted to travel to the UK one day, and I told him, you know, it's a great place, definitely come. And yeah, he's just a really cool guy, and he had an awesome store. Uh, if you are ever in Pennsylvania, definitely check out Drad's Derailment, because they have a cool selection of wooden railway. Um, but yes, anyway, there's Victor comes to Sodor. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the regular version of Victor, and you get to see just how different um, the Victor comes to Sodor actually is. And one thing I can see straight away is the normal Victor doesn't have the buffer detailing. He has these hazard stripes, which I'm guessing were added because of working in the... Um, in the steel and the steamworks, excuse me, and almost says steelworks. Well, that's not for another five years. But there we go. There's his detailing. So his stripes and everything are slightly different. Obviously, the color is completely different. But they're like um, how do I want to say it? Like um, two like pinstripes um, on the Victor Kansas Soda model, but on on the normal one, it's just one solid line. His, uh, his number's been replaced, oh sorry, his, wind his number's been replaced by the Steamworks logo. Almost everything else looks pretty much the same, of course, apart from the colour. His pipework actually looks slightly different. It's like thinner detail here than it is on his regular model. Um, not really seeing anything different regards to um, on top of his boiler. There's a look at the back, so slightly different. Still got the nice uh, window detailing over here. Obviously, you know, this model came first, the, the regular one came first. This came in 2009, I want to say, and this, this one obviously came uh, three years later. So, you know, there's going to be some sort of differences between the detailing. But it's interesting, we don't have the line. You know, we've got this yellow line uh, border in the back of the regular version's cab. But it's not on this version. And also, we don't have the buffer detailing, we have the hazard stripes again. And then flipping this around... There we go. Uh, one thing I'm going to check really quick. I got this version off of eBay, so I didn't get it in box. So what is the date on this? I'm guessing 2003. No, 2012, actually. That's weird. Is it 2012 Mattel? Is that what I read? Excuse me a sec. No, 2012 Gullane. Yeah, it's weird. Um, most of the items from 2003 onwards just say 2003, no matter which date they came from. But then, for a little while, we were getting you know the actual dates again, but 2012 basically became the new 2003, so almost everything was dated 2012 again. But there we go, there's Victor comes to Sodor. Um, at this point in time, Victor has not appeared in my series. 
So I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this, whether I'm going to have, you know, the Victor come in as yellow and then be repainted red at some point, like a lot of people have done. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll save this for, you know, just uh, if I ever want to use it for anything. Who knows, maybe I'll introduce it, Victor in red and then have him change to yellow. Who knows what I'll do, but... I figured I don't have a use for this at this point, but I'm going to probably want to use it in the future. So while I have the chance, I decided to get it. So that is Victor comes to Sodor. Let's move on to another item. So far, all the items we've looked at have been based on movies or DVDs. And this next one is following the in the same footsteps. It's the Fog Cars, which is based off the episode um, the Fogman from season 6, which is my personal favourite season. And we're really going back in time now because this one is from 2004. Uh, it's a really interesting looking item and I quite like the look of the, the fog car itself. Plus we've got this cool blasting cap company car. So looks really cool. There's a little look at the packaging, the old star logo. We've got a character card included. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a try me button, we'll listen to that in just a second once we get this out. There's a look at the back, very different from what we've just been looking at. Collect all of your favourite vehicles. Uh, bring the world of Thomas and Friends to life with engines, buildings and endless track layouts. <laughs> uh, detailed graphics, magnet connectors, real wood construction and durable finish. Well, this one is um, definitely going away soon, so is the detailed graphics and then Endless track layouts with Thomas and Friends wood? I don't think so. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, anyway, so let's get to opening up this one. And what's really nice about these old ones is, well, these old items, is that uh, getting into them isn't quite as difficult. Although it is for me because I uh, I do something very, uh, very naughty. I bite my nails, so I don't have nails. <laughs> to actually get into this. I'm going to take this away for just a quick second while we try to get past this tape. There we go. That's better, I got it now. Um, I really like these old um, these old boxes because they have a convenient little door on the side. So you don't have to completely destroy the box, but I understand that this, is, this probably leads to um, problems with theft and what have you. So, come on, if I can just get a grip on, actually, can I, there we are, oh, there we go, there we go, out you come, the fog cars, wow, okay, I noticed this was really yellowed in the packaging, and I was really hoping that it wasn't the plastic of the, um, of the fog cars, but yeah, this plastic piece is really yellowed, let's just uh, put this back in here, oh, actually, wait, before we do, we have another bit of plastic, and then we also have this, which looks to be a pamphlet and also the character card, which is really exciting. Why is this not going back in here now? Oh, well, I'll sort that out later. Anyway, here they are, the fog cars. Let's uh, get a bit of a zoom in on here. There we go. So let's go take this one away and just focus on the fog car itself for the time being. It looks really nice, and it looks very much like the one you see in the episode. So, we got warning device. It is a warning device. Fog. On this side. And the front, and you've got these cool controls and what have you on here. You, you know, we obviously can't interact with these, but it's nice they got this detail. Um, it's almost, it's pretty much 90%, well not 90%, it's like 50% plastic. This entire top part... The grey part with the signs and everything is plastic, but this yellow part is actually wood, which is nice to see. There we go, foghorn car. And we noticed that we could do a little something. There's a speaker here, and uh, when it's in the box we had access to this, so let's go ahead and press this and see what happens. Beautiful. It's the, the actual sound effect from the episode. And it's also Derek's horn, actually. Um, from Double Teething Troubles. Let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. This is the Brendan Bay Blasting Cap Car. Uh, this is quite an interesting looking piece. I'm guessing uh, these are like the um, the detonators that 
Cyril puts on the tracks. There we go, blasting cap car. So it's kind of cool that we actually get like a car full of these. Um, it's a nice little detail. Uh, it's a shame you know, some of these aren't like separate that you can actually take out and put on the track. I'm not I'm not trying to suggest that they should include mini explosives to put on your track, but it would be kind of cool to actually take one of these out and put it on the track or something, have your engine run over it, and maybe it would make a sound or something. I don't know. But there we go. So they're kind of cool. Out of curiosity, let's take a little look. I'm guessing it's going to say 2003 on the wheel. Uh... Yeah, 2003. So yeah, so these are really cool. Um, oops. That's what they look like, like that. I, I I do prefer the way they set them up though. So we'll put those there for a second. And we will take a look at what we got here. I'm not seeing the collector card unless I left it in the packaging. I don't think so. Um... But this is not a collector card, this is the pamphlet. Whoa, okay, this is a, this is a, st a step up from the 2013 pamphlet. Let me zoom back out here for just a sec. So this is the pamphlet. What year is this? 2004, I'm guessing? Let's say, anyway. No, 2003. It says 2003 on the back. I'm just going to move these other way really quick so we get a little bit more room. Um, nice. So we've got engines, coaches and cars. Uh, looks like 2003 was the year for Ari Burt and the gold mine cars. So that's really cool. A lot of nice items on here, although they look like old pictures to me. Well, they're actually the, um, the weird um, prototype models because this was around about the time... In fact, this might have been the first year where they were upgrading all of the engines. So they all had, you know, the extra details and they were bigger and what have you. That's really nice. And then we've got the limited edition vehicles, which are the uh, Thomas Comes to Breakfast and James Goes Buzz Buzz packs, which are really nice. We've got multi-car packs, which are really nice. I actually have this one. This is the Thomas's Winter Wonderland train. I do have that one. I also have Flying Scotsman, but that's about it for what we got here. The Stepney Museum cars, that would actually go quite nicely with the the Dino Fossil um, Discovery trucks. They would be quite nice for that. Bertram, the scrap, uh, scrap cars, they're really nice. The five, five car value pack, uh, well, the Soda gift pack, the five car value pack is another thing. But yeah, really cool. Buildings and destinations, I apologise. If I can't get it all in frame and if the glare is really bad, this, this right here, which I don't know if you can see it, that's the coal station. That is my favourite destination. And I hope I can get that one day. Bridges and tunnels, a lot of cool stuff. Got the mountain tunnel, the, the Soda Bay Bridge, roadway adventures. So they've got a lot of cool road um, accessories, different vehicles. Lorry 1, George, Caroline Thumper. We've got Elizabeth, Bulgy, Tiger Moth, and the Road Crew, which are new for this year. And some road and rail sets. Really nice. And we've got the whole other back of this thing. There's so many products on here. And that's why these pamphlets are so cool. Because you look at these and think, wow, I wish I had that engine. Oh, wow, they've made this engine. And it makes you want to go out and buy them all. It's a great marketing technique. So we've got all different bits of track. We've got battery power stuff. And that ranges expanded a lot lately what with like battery powered toby and spencer and victor and what have you um sets different sets they're all really nice set expansion packs it's all really cool um but what i'm concerned about is i haven't got the character card i'm looking all over the box right now here's the box uh there's a bit of plastic this, I mean, this is all completely plastic and see-through. You can definitely see there's no character card inside of here. Um, that's the, um, the instructions. But I don't have the character card, which is a shame. It definitely says up there, collector card included. No, I'm up. There's absolutely no character card here. 
which is a big shame. I don't exactly have a collection of character cards anyway. No, definitely not. Uh, so that is a shame. I was hoping to be able to read that. And let me bring these back in, actually. There we go. That's better. Um, I was hoping to be able to read that. But um, sadly, we can't. But there we go. So there's the fog cars from 2004, 2003-ish. So really nice bits of rolling stock. I love this. It's a nice piece to have. This is a cool like um, addition as well. I really like the looks of these cars a lot. So there we go. Nice little throwback in time. So we will move these along now and move on to our next item. I've had to lift the camera way up in order to fit this next one on screen. And it's a good one. It's the Dustin Comes In First book pack. Uh, this is a really um, interesting and special pickup for me because this is from the Sodor Story Collection, as you can see down there, which is a series of items which never made it over to the UK in any way, shape or form. I mean, I said that about a few of the other items we looked at, but this is something that never, ever would have come over because... Uh, back in 2014, I believe the story goes that um, stores were concerned about the quality of wooden railway items and the fact that they were featuring more and more plastic and they were worried about the future of the brand. So to, uh, to, put the, to put the minds at ease, Mattel came out with the sort of story collection which was made up of certain sets and book packs that were only available um, in certain specialty stores and characters and such that were only available in one railway and they were made with much more um, high quality materials and they started the they kicked it all off with logan and the big blue engines then they brought in sam and the great bell and then they have dustin who is the third and final one of these one railway exclusive characters um, i purchased this off of uh, Thomas Wooden Railway, he brought this along as uh, something he wanted to sell, he had an extra that he wanted to get rid of, so I purchased it off him, so thank you very much to him for selling this to me. Um, on the back here you can see some of the other sets and book packs and the other stories and everything that they've come up with, so we've got Thomas's Birthday Surprise, James Sorts It Out, Percy the Little Goat, and the one we're going to look at, Dustin Comes In First. So I'm really excited to get into this one, and I have no idea how I'm going to do this very easily, because I've got a big box in my way in order to lift up this camera. So let me just take this away really quickly. Just have a look. Okay, there is tape. Let me just uh, see if I can get my finger into it. Yeah, it's not a good idea to bite your nails, because then when it comes to tape and what have you, it becomes almost impossible but there we go i got it now so let's go ahead and see what we've got so i'm really excited to, to have this is an item i never would have expected to pick up i'll just say that so it's a really special pickup for me so let's pull this out this is really cool so there's the dustin comes in first book for the book back oh it slides up like this um we'll take a little look at that in just a moment but let's Take a look, how do you... Oh, there's a whole big slab of tape on the back. Oh, my worst enemy. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, actually, it's not too hard at all. Okay, um, where can I put this book? Let's put this... You know what, let's put it over there, so it's just about in frame. There we go. That's probably got it. Yeah. And the feeling is going to fall over. There we go. So you got... A nice look at Thomas over there in the corner. Okay, let's bring this back in because this is an unboxing video. You want to see me actually unbox this thing. Come on. There we go. But yeah, I, I really want to get Logan and Sam one day. Perhaps on my next visit to the US I might be able to pick them up. There we go. And now what? Can I just... Oh, there we go. I can just wrench this out. Here we go. So there's Dustin's tender and Dustin himself. I want to keep all this and I want to put this back in the box. So I will sort that out myself later. But there we go. So 
Here is Dustin. You cannot see him. Um, so I'm going to have to lift him up like this. But here he is. Dustin, the snowblower, I believe is what he actually is. So I'll put his tender down for just a minute and we'll focus on Dustin himself. Um, his entire front is made of plastic, but there is a reason for that. There's a look at his face. If it will focus, maybe not. Hmm. But, okay, it is just about focusing. There we go. So there's a look at his face. Really kind of cool, serious looking face. And he's got his rotor, which is actually powered by his wheel. So this bottom part is plastic. So I'm guessing there's some sort of gear mechanism in there to make his um, rotor spin. Really, really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, his other main body is made of wood. The rotary. What's that? 1869 JWE. Don't really know what that means. It probably relates to um, his bases or some sort. No detail on the back, which is interesting. We had lots of detail on Dart and Victor, but... Oh, did we have detail on Dart? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, we have a little bit of detail. Sorry, I'm looking, um, looking at him off to the side. There's look at the top, so it's just all black. And the bottom, dust in. Really, really nice. And then his tender, which is just a repaint of um, Mike's tender, the 2015 Mike. And it just says dust in on it. And it just got a little bit of um, rivet detail, what have you, and the coal. So, yeah, dust in is an interesting looking item and I will say I do have plans already I've already written an episode based around Dustin so I'm gonna put him down here even though you can't see him I'm gonna slide the book in so this is Dustin comes in first it feels like a nice quality book let me just move Dustin out of the way let's see I don't want to show too much of the story but let's get a look so Dustin comes in first so that's what we saw on the back of the box and yeah you can just get a, an idea of what it is it's just a picture book with a little bit of um story so yeah i won't show too much of that for copyright reasons but it's an interesting um it's been an interesting read who knows maybe i'll adapt the story one day i don't know if anybody's actually done that it'd be kind of cool to see if anybody's anybody's actually adapted any of these stories from the Sodor story collection um, using the sets, all the items um, that go along with them. But there we go. So there's Dustin. Really cool item. I'm really happy to have him. I look forward to being able to actually include him in my series one day. And this is a very special item to me, of course, because this never came over to the UK. So I'm really happy and feel quite lucky to be able to have him now. So once again, thank you to Tom's Point Railway for selling this to me. Let's move along to our next item. And the next one we're going to look at is we're going to start looking at the Brio items. So we've looked at all of the Thomas One Railway items. Now let's move on to the Brio items. And we're going to start off with the two items that I technically can't unbox. And I'll explain why later. But these are the hay wagons. These are some rolling stock I've been looking to get for a long time and I finally managed to find them. They came from uh, Drod's derailment, same place I got uh, Victor, comes, uh, Victor Comes to Soto and these are the last two that they had so I was really happy to get these. Uh, we'll move one of these off for just a minute and we will focus on one and I'll explain what I mean when I technically can't unbox them. So I don't know if maybe the adhesive Rio uses for holding the plastic to the cardboard but uh, isn't as strong as what Mattel or um, Learning Curve uses but after I bought them the little cardboard back back in part kind of came away so I technically can't unbox these but I technically can because I'm still taking something out of box and this is really cool you have this little bit of plastic and this little cardboard bit is actually separate and I don't know I guess his main purpose is just to have the information there, but nothing more than that. And you do have a nice little detail of Brio track there. But we'll go ahead and put these all away and then move these off to the side. Let's go ahead and bring in the other one. And the same thing happened with this one. It just fell away, so we won't dwell on that too much. But here we go. 
there's the two trucks, the two hay wagons, and I suppose actually, one thing I forgot to do, we can take a look at the back of the cardboard. So there's the um, the wagon that we just bought. It's a two-piece set, so you get the truck and you get a load of hay. And I really like this as well. You get some images of some extra items you can pick up. And what really intrigues me is this one right here. The um, I believe this is called the Handy Coal Wagon or something, but it's a cool little hopper which comes with a load of coal. And I really want to get those because it looks awesome and I want to get so many of them as I do with most Brio items or most anything rolling stock so we'll go ahead and zoom in on these really quick um, we'll go ahead and take away one of these and we'll just focus on one for now but I did want to show that there are two so um, the hay wagon so what is this all about why did I want to get this so much well I'll show you in just a sec but let me just show you how this load of um, hay it's a simple wooden block, just painted yellow. It has a magnet on top, so it can be lifted up by cranes. And it has these two little holes beneath because... Actually, let me get that bit of card again. Um, there exist these types of cargo cars that Brio makes, which have these little wooden pegs on them. And you can see another bit of cargo like that right there. And that's what these holes are for, so you can put this on one of those cars. And it holds it in place and stops them falling off. So... Nothing interesting about this, it's just a yellow block of wood. Um, would be nice to have some sort of detailing, maybe some like bands or whatever to show the hay being kept together or something. I don't know. It's just very simple, so we'll take that away for now. Here is the wagon itself. It's a nice red wagon. You've got the word Brio written there. And there's not really much else about it. It's made completely of plastic, at least the upper part is, the chassis wood. And yeah, I have something to say about that a little bit later. And of course, we have two, so they're exactly the same, they're identical. And yeah, so why did I why was I so bent on getting these? Well I'll explain why. Because I already technically have two of these. So these are the ones that I've had since childhood. Uh, but they are they are slightly different. So we'll take one of these away each. Uh, ignore the fact that my the ones I already have have faces on them. That's just what I like to do. Um, we'll take the cargo away as well, briefly. But yeah, I just want to show some slight differences. So with the older one, it's got a black chassis and the Brio sticker down here. But the newer one has a grey chassis and the Brio marking is up on the truck itself. And in fact, I've just noticed, if I bring this one closer... I don't know if you can see it, but it has the Brio logo sort of embossed into the plastic at the top there as well. Um, other than that though, there's not a whole lot of other differences, but there is one other difference I did want to show. If I tip these up, the old one has this hollow area, so the chassis is almost completely hollow. So you've got so much room down there, but the new one, it's not. The, the chassis isn't hollow. So you can't go all the way down into it. So let me just try this. Okay, so the the cargo isn't quite big enough to fit down there. But yeah, the newer ones don't have that much depth to them. Which is an interesting change. But I can sort of see why. The other difference is the wheels. Let's see if I can show that in any capacity. So the the newer one has the traditional, you know, just normal wheels. But the old one has like these ridges on it. And I think that this is supposed to be like a cattle wagon that's used on the road. At least I think. I think that's what it's intended to be. But this new one is supposed to be on the rails. So yeah. So I wanted to just show that really quick. I like using these red wagons. Um, the old ones that I already have. Because um, in the CGI series, at least currently, you see a lot of red Troublesome, uh, well not troublesome trucks, but you see a lot of red trucks getting about. And since I already had these, I like using them as the red trucks. I've since made my own custom scratch built red trucks that look a lot more realistic, but I still like to use these ones and I just wanted to pick up more of them so that I could have a long train of them. So let's just go ahead and see how that looks. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So obviously, like I said, there are differences. 
you have like the Brio logo there and the chassis are different colours. But I still think the four of these in a row look really nice together. I may paint over these and just make this all completely red. It's on the other side, is it? No, it's not. It's only has that there. In fact, oh look at that, it actually has the Brio embossed into the plastic on the new one as well. I didn't even notice. Is it on both sides? It's on, no, it's on just the one side. That's weird. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I only just noticed this, but the Brio stickers are on the same side, so they both face this way, but the the Brio logo is only on one side, and it's on the left hand on this one, and on the right hand side on the, the front one. I don't just notice that, so I don't know what's correct or not. Yeah, these ones all couple that way, and the logo is on that side, so this one must be either like a factory error or something, or just this piece is just put on the wrong way. So there's a, a funny little interesting little tidbit, but there we go. So two hay wagons. I'm not, you know, too um, keen on these blocks. I think they're a nice bit of cargo, but they should be more detailed in my opinion. But I'm not going to be using them. I'm going to be filling these with my own things, which is why I love these trucks so much, because they're hollow. You can put your own stuff in them. So there we go. So uh, two hay wagons. Let's move on to something a bit more interesting. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. For our technically second to last item that I'm going to be unboxing, I've saved the best one. It's the Brio Gold Train Pack. And this I have been looking for for a very, very long time. For, I guess, technically two reasons. And the best part of it is I managed to find two of them. These also came from Draws Derailment, and I'm really, really excited that I finally have these in my collection, and I can open these up. So, what do we have? It's the Gold Train, so we've got the engine, we've got two very, very lovely pieces of rolling stock, I cannot wait to see those, and we've got some cargo to go with them. Let's go ahead and spin this around, and you can see on the back, five pieces, we've got an engine, two rolling stock, two uh, cargo loads. The engine has this interesting little detail that you can um, pull the front up to access the engine. And we've got some other little products going on down here. Um, I can't really see if I'm holding this, but I think, I think that's supposed to be like a battery powered engine. That's supposed to be some sort of freight train. That I think is a set and that's another set. And that's a really nice one because it's got the the crane going on, the overhead gantry crane, but we're not focused on those, we want to see this set that's right here, so let's go ahead and pull this out. Um, remember I brought these over from the US, so uh, when packing them in my suitcase they kind of got a little bit damaged, the boxes at least, so they don't really close properly, but here we go, oh here we go, beautiful. And there's the contents. Let's go ahead and pull these out. We're probably going to get a lot of creaking plastic right now. Okay, if you hate that sound, I apologise, but it's about as best as I can do. Let's try and get these lovely hoppers out. There's one. Ugh. I'm so sorry for the noise. There's one. There's two. Lovely. Let's get all these back in. Oh, um... We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just take a look at this for now, and then we'll open up the other one. Uh, but here we go. So here is the gold train. Looks very, very nice indeed. We have just the one engine. We'll take a look at him really, really quickly. Um, it's all made of plastic. And I mentioned earlier, I had something to say about that. I will in a minute. I remember I didn't talk about it earlier. 
But what you can do is you can actually open up the front of this and you can access like the engine. So it's kind of a cool feature, but I don't really think it's enough to warrant making the entire thing out of plastic. But I did want to show one thing really quickly. I actually technically already have this engine. Uh, this is the same design, so this can come up as well. But um, this is from the Forest Pack. I can't. They, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. What is happening there? Is this. This one's made back to front. That should not happen. This one's backwards. Yeah, that's. That's odd. That's very odd. The magnets are reversed on this one. I wonder if it's the same on the other one. We'll have to get that out now. Um, but it's not the engine that I was interested in, as nice as it is. It's these. These are what I was so excited to see and get. These are these lovely hoppers. And I uh, just showed that on the uh, back of the hay wagon packaging that these exist in brown. Well, I was really looking forward to getting these in grey, and they come in this set. And these are really, really cool. I love these hoppers. I don't exactly have hoppers. I do technically. Brio has made hopper trucks in the past, but not of this design. But these just look so beautiful. It's a form of rolling stock that I don't have, and I was tempted to make my own. But now I don't really have to. And I like these, because these are slightly shorter. If I... Actually, we can just use this. See how well I can portray this. You can see that the wheelbase is slightly shorter than is normal. So I like the scale of them. And as, you sh as you've already seen, we do get two of them in the set. We also get two of these lovely uh, gold pieces. It's a stack of gold. Um, it's got a magnet on it to, uh, to lift up with a crane. And it's got the same holes underneath. Is this all plastic as well? I can't quite tell if this is plastic or wood or not, but it would make sense if it was plastic. Yeah, I'm going to say it's plastic because all this detailing on it. Um, but there we go. Speaking of plastic, um, let's go ahead and put you right to the back. Let's go quickly get the other one out. And this is what I meant earlier when I said the boxes were getting damaged and all that because... This plastic part is bent and doesn't come back, so the box was opening all the time. Let me see if I can quickly get these out. There's one. There's that. Oh, that one came out really easily. What is happening? Come on! Yeah, I see what I've done wrong here. Ah. It's a stubborn one. There we go. Should not have been that hard. But there we go. So we got the other one out. Okay, there we go, because that, that way. Okay, I'm really interested now. Yeah, that's weird. The um, These engines are back to front. They couple like that. But then this one couples like that. That's weird. It's not it's not too uncommon for non, you know, Thomas Wooden Railway brands to be the other way around. I have had some non Thomas Wooden Railway branded engines or whatever um, with the magnets reversed but Brio typically goes the same way I'm surprised these two are actually backwards but it doesn't matter because it's the rolling stock that I was interested in and it's the rolling stock that actually works, these aren't specific you can have these either way and that's what I wanted to see 
is the four of them all put together. Um, I'm, I have this weird thing where I like to have four of a given rolling stock, which is why I bought four of the oil and coal cargo two packs with the green coal truck and the Vickerstown Diesel Works oil truck. But having four of these is really, really nice. I like these a lot. So before I forget to, let me go ahead and discuss the one little thing about Brio that I'm sort of dislike. It is the amount of plastic they use. We have, you know, we talk a lot about how um, the Thomas Wooden Railway line typically uses a lot of plastic. Well, Brio is, compared to Brio, you know, I think Mattel and Lunica did a good job. Uh, a lot of Brio rolling stock is almost made entirely of plastic. I have bought several engines which are made, you know, the entirety of it is plastic and the, the chassis is wood, but that's about it. Like the entirety of this is plastic. The entirety of these minus the chassis is plastic. Even the cargo is plastic. Um, the log trucks, I don't think I have any around me at the moment, but they're all entirely plastic. So, and, you know, I mentioned that this truck that we looked at, the dyno, the egg discovery car was entirely plastic, but that has a purpose because this has batteries inside it and a little lighter feature. But this, these, it technically, you know, the detail or whatever needs to be plastic, but you know what I mean? You, you know what I'm getting at. There's a lot of plastic that goes into Brio these days and it's a bit of a shame, but if it means we get high quality stuff, then I can overlook it slightly, but it is a thing to point out. We always say that, you know, the Thomas Wooden Railway line is using a lot of plastic, but compared to Brio, it's almost nothing. So there you have it. There are the two gold train packs that we opened up. I'm very excited to have these. These engines not gonna really do much for me, but the hoppers are definitely gonna get a lot of use and I'm really excited. So let's move along now to our final unboxing. It's, I would, I'd like to say I say the best for last, but I really didn't. This was the best thing to unbox, but we'll look at it anyway. When I said this wasn't very exciting, I really meant it. We have, for our final item to unbox, a pack of track. <laughs> It is an unboxing, so it does go along with it, but it's just a pack of tracks, nothing special. These are short straights, or as I call them, small straights, and because I call the half, you know, the ones that are half this length, the short straights. But this is just a pack, these are the four inch straights, I do believe. Um, I only bought the one because the Brio track is a little bit expensive, and I'm always sort of running low on these ones in particular. So we go ahead and just pull these out. Um, it's nice that I'm still able to buy track like this. The the Thomas One Railway line kind of stopped with the whole um, track pack sort of thing, or at least you know it became very expensive to actually purchase it. And I I like the fact that the box is really small and compact. You know, it's just holding four bits of track. It's not a massive tray with you know, just like two bits of track in it. It doesn't need a lot, it just needs that. So, I appreciate that, Brio, and yeah, literally, it's just a stack, just four of these straight, these small straights. It's the exact same ones that I was using to um, show the engines earlier, in fact. So, really nothing special. Um, I guess I can just lay it out here. I suppose the only interesting thing to show is that on this one, if you can see it at all, it's got the Brio website, so www.brio.net. So you can go to that website and you can purchase Brio items from there. But there we go, literally just four pieces of track. And since we're looking at track, I thought I'd show you this as well. So also from Draws Derailment, they had this shelving unit sort of thing, and it had a bunch of you know just loose single pieces of track in it. And I ended up purchasing a couple of these, uh, from Big Jigs, I should say. So, they had a lot of different ones, but I was most interested in getting these. These are the 6-inch long tracks, because these are, like, I don't say, like, oddball size, but, you know, compared to, you have this track, 
and then you have ones which are half this length, and then you have the long straights which are twice this length. This one is kind of in between, so it goes along nicely when you're using like points or what have you. If you're using double track, you can put one of these alongside it. So I purchased two of those, and I also purchased two of these male adapters because um, you know these you can always use more of. And these ones are actually marked with my username on it because these actually came in handy when we were building one of our layouts on um, doing the meetup. So to make sure I knew which ones are mine, I marked them up. We didn't use these, so I didn't mark them. But yeah, literally just some track, nothing, uh, nothing special at all. But it was still an unboxing, so there we go. That will do it for the unboxing side, but we still have a few other items that I want to show. So let's get to them next. Since we've opened up everything that was in a box, we're going to take a look now at all the stuff that isn't in a box. These are all the gifts or other stuff that I bought off other people that are attending the meetup. And we're going to start off with this, which is the Sodor Railway Repair. This was a gift from Enterprise and Engine 93, who I stayed with when I was out in America. And he basically said, you know what, this is a spare thing, I don't really need it at the moment, so, you know, if you want it, you're willing to take it. So I took him up on the offer, and I thank him greatly for it. I much appreciate it, because it's such a cool item, and it's one which I never thought I'd actually get, because I don't recall ever seeing this in the, um, in the UK growing up. So we'll take a quick look at it. We'll take a look at the engine first. Um... It's really tricky, but he ha does have a nice looking face, which has like goggles on. It's really tricky to see because of this little visor thing. I'm not really sure what that is. He's got some nice detail on the side, some sort of engine detail or whatever, and a little uh, guardrail type of thing. He's got Sodo Railway Repair written down here. He's got his cab. Uh, on the back, I don't know if this is supposed to be a window or like where this he's got this big ledge here and usually he'd have one of these um shoots that fit on here so i don't know whether this is supposed to be like a window or if this is supposed to be where ballast is stored and then it gets drawn up and then onto that conveyor and then it goes onto the other truck but i don't know i it's up to you to decide what that is and yeah he told me this was missing i don't mind i don't really care about it to be honest Maybe one day I might find a spare one, but who knows, but I don't mind if it's not there. Uh, he has two little funnels or smokestacks or exhausts or what have you. But yeah, for the most part, that's pretty much what he is. He's dated 1998. I checked before I, uh, before I started this bit. So yeah, he's a really nice looking thing. Let us bring in the other uh, wagon, the second wagon. It's a really unique looking piece. It's got these conveyor belts on it and they have like ballast uh, molded into them so the idea would be and these can all turn so the idea would be that you know ballast can be drawn up and like dropped onto the track so the workman can then spread it over the track so it's a nice little thing and what's kind of cool is that you can actually spin these all the way around 180 so you know if you want to you can have this facing the other way so you know if you want to do that you can but for the now, for now, let's just spin these back around to the correct way. So it's kind of cool, very simple. Uh, but this piece right here, this is the one that I like the most. Um, this is a really nice looking wagon. Uh, it's a short thing. It's uh, very, very simple in its design, but it works. Its main color is black, but the framework is all printed up in like this olive, sort of lime green type of color. And it's all the way around. It's on all four sides of it. And it's really nice. And there's a number here which is 6773. I don't know whether that's supposed to be some sort of extra detail that Learning Curve decided to do. It's got the ballast on top. So it's a really nice wagon. You don't have to use this with the uh, Soda Railway Repair. And in fact, if I just bring in really quickly the, uh, the blasting cap car from the fog cars we looked at earlier it's actually pretty much the same mold except for the top obviously this has the ballast this has the blasting caps but the main body itself is the same thing but i really like the look of this so i can't wait to use this in 
like goods trains or what have you but that is the solar railroad repair in its entirety um it's a really unique item and it's based it's one of those items that learning curve made that's based on you know obscure sort of railway series characters um this character only appeared in like one illustration in i think it was the episode in the story ballast i think it was the one of the, one of the stories from the small railway engines book i can't remember the name of the book off the top of my head it might just be small railway engines actually but yeah so that's a sort of railway repair i can't wait to get use out of this in my series one day uh it's a really cool piece and I thank you very much, Enterprise 93, for this amazing gift. We're going to move him along, and we're going to move on to looking at Byron. Uh, we're just going to do all of these in succession. No reason to do any special, um, to dedicate their own clip to each of these. So here's Byron from the pack. I bought this off of Ed's trains. He bought he brought along a ton of stuff for display, but also for, si um, for sale. So he had a ton of stuff there. This was one of them. Uh, there's a look at his face, really, really nice. Um, his side, he's got some engine detail and his number 18. A little bit of detail on the back, same on the other side. And he's got his treads, which actually work really nicely. So if you just give a little bit of pressure and push him along, he does actually roll. And in typical fashion for these pack characters, you can actually push the cap down and his blade lifts up. Which is a really cool little uh, action feature. I really like the pack, and I've been trying as hard as I can to find the rest of the pack members. Um, I already have Jack, Alfie, Isabella, and Oliver, but I'm really trying to find the rest, like Nelson, Patrick, Kelly, Max and Monty, and what have you. Um, but they're proving a little bit tricky to find. But I'm really happy that I finally got Byron. So we're going to move him along, and we're going to take a look at the Brio um, uh, wagons and such that I got. This is a bell truck. This is this was a gift from Hero the Japanese Train. I'm guessing that he just had this and thought, you know what, I don't need it. So he let me have it. So thank you to him for this. This is actually my second one that I have. I do have this one, which is um, obviously the same thing. I've had this for, uh, for many years. But this one is in slightly worse-ish condition. I mean, the wheels and whatever are corroded a little bit and the magnet is very corroded um it's got very little you know magnetism going on there with all that rust on it but i just want to show that this is my second one it's a cool you know interesting thing you can don't know how well you can hear that but as you roll it these little bits rock back and forth and strike the bell and make a nice little noise um but this thing is 100 percent plastic there is not a single piece of wood in this for a wooden railway thing. It's just completely plastic. It's silly. I don't like it that much, so I never use it. But there we are. I wanted to show it nonetheless. Uh, this next one is a nice-ish one, though. This is the Shell uh, Petrol Wagon, also by Brio. It's a really nice-looking tanker. And once again, it's my second one that I've got. This is the one that I've had since my childhood. It's in, again, it's in worse condition. It's like all scratched up and whatever and faded slightly. So this one's really nice. And you can see I did add a face to this. But yeah, I just wanted to show that I do have two of these now. And this is a nice wagon. I don't tend to use this too much in my series because it's a, you know, it's a real world brand. So I don't want to be accused of like being sponsored by Shell or whatever. So, but it's still a nice, really nice quality feeling item. And... We'll move on now to this. This is a crane, a Brio crane. It's a really nice looking thing. Let's see if I can get it sort of in focus, or on screen rather. It's a really nice looking piece. It's based on a four inch wide bit of track. The crane itself is completely plastic, but it does turn. And it has this little dial on the side so you can raise and lower and the hook is actually or the magnet is actually on a hinge and it's really nice it actually works quite well so if i bring in the hay wagon that we looked at earlier on get this lined up properly you can lower that lift it up turn the crane and then 
lower it back down into this nice little area down here. Oops, let me get that away. This little loading dock area. So it's a really nice crane, it works nicely. And this, along with the shell tanker, were gifts from one railway only. Again, he just had them and I think because he doesn't use Brio, he just wanted someone else to have them, so he let me take them. So thank you very much to him. And that is about it for the wooden railway side of things. So the next thing I want to show is this. And this is an Ertl Diesel 10. Now, I feel so bad for this. I can't quite remember from whom I bought this. I want to say maybe it was Master of the Lemons. I don't really remember. I'm so sorry. Once I find out who I actually bought this from, I will uh, mention them in the description. But there we are. But it's an Ertl Diesel 10. It's a really nice looking thing. I am really much into Ertl and I, I've already shown my Ertl collection. And I've got a list of um, all the items that I'm missing and this was one of them. So there's a look at his face. Very menacing face. Love it. A side view, you know, it's an Ertl, it's really nice. And this is one of my favourite Ertl engines, if you will. Um, I'm not too big a fan on the Ertl engines, but the road vehicles and everything I love. Uh, but Diesel 10 is an exception, I love him. Uh, the only problem I have really is that Pinchy does not move in any way, shape or form. You can't open him, you can't lift him up and swing him around or anything, you can't do anything. He's just there, he's just static, he's just there for the look and the display and everything but there we are so that's the last thing i wanted to show um for now but we have one more thing that i would like to show but i need to zoom the camera way out so give me a sec and we'll take a look at the last thing in this video and for the last thing that i want to show that i picked up from this meetup is this the thomas the tank engine complete collection by the reverend w Audrey. This book contains all 26 Railway Series books written by the Reverend W. Audrey. And it's a big deal for me because, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you, until I joined YouTube, I didn't know a thing about the Railway Series. I didn't really know that, like most shows, the, um, the, you know, the TV series was based on a book series originally. And I'm just showing you a few select pages right now so you get an idea of what the book is about. But... Yeah, when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up because I've not exactly read the Railway series. I've only read two books, which are uh, Thomas the Tank Engine and Tank Engine Thomas again. And, you know, the latter of which I only picked up about a month ago. So it's really cool to get to actually read the book, to read all the Railway series. And there's some awesome illustrations from inside the book on the back as well. But yeah, this is a fantastic book. Um, I love it. I've been reading through one Railway Series book in the evening and it's just great to actually see the similarities but also the differences between the Railway Series stories and the TV series stories. Seeing how they adapted each um, each story. Um, you know, what, you know, which aspects from each story they actually decided to adapt and which they decided to leave away. It's a fantastic thing. I'm so happy I managed to get it. This, along with Byron, I also purchased from Ed's Trains, and I do not regret it one bit. It's a fantastic book. It's a great way to actually uh, experience the Railway series. There's a lot of stories. You know, it's every it's every story from the Reverend W. Audrey. So it's, it's a really nice read. But, you know, do I really need to say that? It's the Railway series. Of course, it's, they're all fantastic stories. So if you want, if you've never read the Railway series, I highly recommend you try and get this book. I do want to try and find one which is, you know, the stories from Christopher Audrey. I don't know if there's like a complete book where it has all, was it 42 uh, books? Or if maybe there's this, but then also there's one from Christopher Audrey. There's a complete collection for him and his stories. Uh, I hope to be able to find that one day if it exists, but... Um, for the most part, you know, I'm just really, really happy that I managed to pick this up. It's a fantastic book. So that about does it. That is the last item I wanted to show. So let's move on to the conclusion of this video. And take one more look at all the things we opened up and looked at in this video. And with that, this unboxing and haul video is complete. 
we've opened up everything that was in a box and we've taken a good look at all the stuff that wasn't in a box. Uh, once more, thank you very, very much to Enterprise Engine 93 for taking me to the stores to actually purchase some of this and for the incredible gift of the Sword of Rare Repair. I look forward to using him and all the other items in my series at some point. Um, also, thank you to the aforementioned users who um, either gave me their gifts or for bringing along the stuff to sell that I could buy so I could actually, you know, make good use of them, like the book and the Bi and Byron and all that. Really, really happy, and I thank you all very much. And I also thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Um, would you like to see more from me? I personally had a lot of fun opening up some of these items and I'm tempted to do it again. I haven't really got to open up a bunch of items at once like this before. Um, also be sure to let me know which of these items is your favorite. Uh, for me, definitely my favorites are going to be the Soda Rara Repair and the uh, hopper trucks that came from the Brio Gold Train packs. Uh, but that's about it from me, so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.